But I think this is time for a relaxing whiskey. I hope you will join us at the privacy of your own home. Don't worry. We can all gather because there's this TV screen between us. And my whiskey is one of my favourites. Not that expensive. Talisca 10. Talisca on the Isle of Skye. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Our sky is beautiful. And it smells of the place. A bit briny. And it's just wonderful. And my guest, who doesn't actually like whiskey, and people complain every time he's on because they say, he pulls her face with your beautiful whiskies. It's John Roskam. Hello, Andrew. I will try <laughs> Head and of the pull Institute face. of Public Affairs. There's a lot of things to pull a face <laughs> over at the moment. Whiskey is the least of them. Look, I tell you what, it'll be a rare pleasure. You'll be in lockdown. Make sure you've got a bottle of whiskey for the lockdown if it comes. Um, I, oh, I hope you like that. Oh, it's oh, almost going to do you, the you experiment. Put in, you put into practice. Yes, so that, 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 that is when the health system can't cope, when your whiskey spills over the edge. I must be so nervous about it all. Mate, these are... Oh, cheers to you. Anything? Cheers. Don't pull a face, OK? The camera's trained on you. Magnificent. I'm not going to cough. <laughs> the first time you coughed as well, mate. Now, worse. Andrew, when I come on... Yeah. And we have a conversation, we have a whiskey with a mate. You give me a whiskey and I try and bring you a book. Yeah, but I, I left I, the book I, behind. I love giving I'm, you one. I forgot no, what it I'm was. I'm trying to re maintain retail spending in Melbourne. I went down to the shop this afternoon. Uh, they were out of the Decameron. Of course, the medieval... Boccaccio. The tales of uh, ten people escaping the plague in the 1350s. I was... They what were, a great They link. were out of Camus, the plague... So I thought, well, what can I get for Andrew Bolt this evening? And I got the best hundred poems of Les Murray. I glanced through it. Les Murray, who Les... died, what was it, two years ago, yeah. the Australian poet? Great Australian poet. And I glanced through it and I saw Panic Attack. It said, and I won't read the whole poem, but it starts, The body had a nightmare. Awake, no need for the movie. And the last line is, which is so apposite to right now, Relax. In time, your hourglass will be reversed again. Let's hope so. It, uh, hourglass will be reversed again. Does it mean you go backwards? Uh, well, you I, live again? Resurrection? Well, we live again. We get our jobs back. We're allowed out of the house. We can go to the pub. We can have football in front of crowds. This is very, very difficult times. This too will pass. But how many people will have their savings or jobs or that just shredded in the meantime i mean that's that's well, i already point. know i already know people personally um who are casuals who aren't getting shifts um uh place i get my coffee uh here in this melbourne cbd uh they're anticipating to close oh. tomorrow the restaurant around the corner from the ipa uh that's laid off, laid off nearly all their staff um, this is going to be very difficult. So indeed. hard. You know, you, you mentioned Boccaccio, what was that, 15th century or something? 14th. 14th, 14th century. Black Death. Black Death. Uh, Daniel Defoe, Journal that, of Plague Year. That's a good one, yes. Um, in a sense, I feel that we're going back to the past. Or you know, Don't forget, the cultural changes we're seeing, that comes... How long has this scare really been at max that really has hit people? Maybe two weeks? A couple of weeks, yeah. So you think how we will be six months of this. That's right. I think it's going to have a profound effect on how we think, how we act. I think, for one, uh, we might value money and progress a little less. You know, the idea of rat racing, build, 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 and always. And think of now and time and health and friends. And I think we'll value jobs more, being in a job. I think we'll think about society. And you talked about this on your blog, talking about the Prime Minister saying we're all in this together. And we are. Except if you think about, and we've talked about this over the years, everything is dividing Australia. That we are not all equal, we are not all the same, we are not all in this together. Don't push, don't shove, there's enough toilet paper for everyone. The whole idea is now we are different, let's celebrate our diversity. You are different from my tribe, it's different from the next tribe. Um, the challenge will be, can in these very difficult times, can this bring Australia together? And can it actually cut across all of the discussion of the last 20 years of our selfishness and can we develop that selflessness? I don't That's know. a big call, mate, because I just saw today in Victoria, for instance, they released the crime figures, a big jump. I think it's almost like a yeah. 
to record levels of youth crime. That's now, right. youth, of course, are being bred by the generation for the one to come, of the one to come, that's before right. the one to come. So that's ominous. To hear some of the stories uh, of uh, people at a radiology clinic, someone um, texted me who works at a radiology clinic, uh, people are stealing the disinfectant that they need for the patients, you know. Uh, someone was at old aged care home. Visitors are going to loot at all the toilet paper there. Um, busloads of people going into the countryside and, and, yeah. sh and, and leaving the shelves And pretending bare. to be from that town. I mean, seriously. And, and you know, I agree that the sense of... Community. Togetherness, the sense of solidarity. Well, I don't know. We weren't there at World War Two, so we don't know whether people were just rat bags into the black market and the whole and thing. And there was the spirit of the Blitz is overdone, as people talk about. There is that was, right? Apparently, yes. Well, but but I but I am happy to argue something that I think we do know about that the idea that we are all Australian, hmm. that regardless of where we come from, regardless of our background, oh, we are in this together. I think that has gone. Well, has gone. look, look. I, I think you're absolutely right, and I've always warned that this was going, going to be a problem. To be more precise, is going and the social fabric is fraying. Well, the and next which parts this. of the community you're talking about, it was only a few, a couple of months ago, I think, I think it was early this year, that the ABC sent out to staff, be careful of using the expression we Australians that's right, that's right. believe this or we Australians uh, right. act that way, it said you can't talk about we Australians. Now last year I actually did a column saying there is no we anymore. Right. Boy did I get smashed. Racist! But it, 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 you have but been proved true. right and, and um, this is now an opportunity to I think rebuild that community. To, if you can. If you can. No, but you need since the dawn, particularly in the in the media class and the politicians class, I'm not sure that's going to happen. That's right, but uh, but I I think it could potentially sweep away a whole series of things. So um, I think climate change is dead and buried. Oh, is that not true? I I think the, well, at least I, for now. I, I think this idea um, that it doesn't matter how much it costs, we can afford it, is not right. When hundreds of thousands of people could be losing their jobs. Yes, we've had 29 years without a recession. Climate change being driven by young people is now going to change as they start entering the labour force and there are no jobs. Well, put it like this. Take away the fear and the... Well, take away the dying and the sickness. And, and put that to one side. That's, that's awful. Put that to one side. Bad. What we're actually seeing is a world that looks like a global warming nirvana. No planes. Greta Thunberg says, don't fly. Her yeah, mother says, don't fly. Well, no don't planes. drive a car. Don't drive a car. Well, we're still driving a car, but how much longer? We'll go Not long distance. We can't even go to Tasmania. Um, this is, and, and, and factories soon probably right. will close. Uh, or, or I won't say probably, and I must be alarmist. But this is what global warming looks like. That's right. Industries powering down, workers not move, going from home. And, and then now the challenge will be... Um, governments must respond, and they are responding. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there'll be measures like the government is the lender of last resort for small business loans. Uh, there's a debate about uh, how we support people who have lost their jobs. The discussion over 100 years about recessions is it sweeps away businesses that are inefficient or bureaucratic. That is not what is happening now. Businesses that are efficient, businesses that are serving their customers are being swept away through no fault of their own. So the challenge is going to be government is going to get a lot bigger. In well, it must the break your small government heart. Well, it does. But then and then how do we rebuild after after this? Um, uh, well, there's another thing I'm thinking the case may be for more government uh, intervention in building critical industries or at least backups for times like this, like medical supplies, et cetera, et cetera, going, on Australian soil. That, and we're going to have a discussion about manufacturing, about electricity prices. Um, free trade has given uh, a huge boon to the world, to the developing world. But we also have to understand uh, that has come with issues. So there's going to be a debate around Wow, free trade. the Institute of Public Affairs is going to sound no, a lot no, the, different No, the IPA this. will always support free trade, but we also have to understand uh, that free trade has to be predicated on our ability to make things in this country, to being competitive. I've said this is the end of the lollipop economy. This is the end of the idea that we can have people standing on street corners at construction sites, oh. holding stop-go signs, 
paid $180,000 a year. That is unaffordable for the future. John Ruskin, that is so interesting. Listen, I want to spend the last half minute saying something about a woman who died yesterday that I was fortunate enough to meet in Ethiopia. One of the greatest Australians you could ever hope to meet, Dr Catherine Hamlin, has died. She's 96. She formed a fistula foundation at Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, went there some 60 years ago with her late husband, travelled there, saw women who had been left for days sometimes in childbirth, developed fistulas, they couldn't control the urine or even sometimes their faeces, were, lives were ruined, ostracised, she cured them. She trained generations of nurses there. She, her people now staff six or seven hospitals and whatever it is. What she did was wonderful. I hope you can donate to her charity. Look up Catherine Hamlin. She is now dead. Most Australians don't know of her because she really came here. What a great woman. A saint. John Roscombe, thank you so much indeed for your thank time. You. Hang on because Chris Smith is next. Good night.